Hey everyone, and welcome back to Quick Conversations. My name is Jerry L. Johnson. I'm the Executive Director of the Recording Academy's Washington DC chapter. And today we'll be discussing the globalization of Latin urban music, Latin music to the world. We'll be sitting down with five incredible voices in the space, Rick Corrales, Lila Cobo, Mauro Mahiz Mendez, and the amazing duo Domino Saints. But before we get started, just as a quick reminder, this program is being recorded for playback on Facebook and other social platforms. Any additional recording of this program without the express written permission of the Recording Academy is strictly prohibited. So with that, thank you again to this entire group and go ahead and take it away, folks. Hi everyone, my name is Rick Corrales. Uh, we are here to talk about the globalization of Latin urban music. I have with me today, Leila Cobo, Executive Director of Latin Billboard, and Domino Saints, a duo who has been number one on Billboard charts before. And Mahes, Mahes currently is six time platinum producer, uh, worked with uh, Farruko in his last album. Everybody just please, you know, if you haven't known each other yet, please uh, say hi. And then uh, let's talk about the conversation that, that we're going to explore today, which is uh, the globalization of Latin urban music. Awesome. Okay. Well, what's up? David for Domino Saints. Hey, what's up? I'm Gigi, Domino Saints. Super excited to be talking to all of you guys about, you know, Latin music and just being part of it. It's very exciting um, for us, you know, seeing the evolution of how you know, Latin music became global and just being part of it is really, really exciting. And I know that Mayas and Leila can talk about it much more because it's like, we've seen the growth of, you know, how sometimes we're a little bit divided from the rest of the world and Latinos, you know, and it's, and now having that blend and being able to collaborate with artists from Europe, from Africa, from all these countries, they all want to be part of the Latin community. And it's just a really exciting time. Where do you want yeah. to begin, Rick, to talk about, um, I mean, I think Domino Saints and Mayas can talk about how perhaps their music three, four, five years ago just was not traveling as much. And now you see a big difference, don't you, with streaming? Or is yeah. it more than streaming? Do you find that there's a lot of, you probably are finding, like you said, that there's a lot of interest from from other genres and other um, countries and, and other kinds of music that before just wouldn't consider doing Latin music. And you see that in the Grammys. You see, I think you saw that in the in the Grammy Awards in February in the with uh, Cali Uchis winning a, a Grammy for a song that wasn't a Latin song, entre comillas, no? So it's, it's, uh, the music is, has become very fluid. I think so. I think it's something great to 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 say. For example, when we were when we were little, like you know, eighties, nineties, um, English music had the power to be everywhere in the world, no matter you know if people spoke it or not. Like you know, you would look at Michael Jackson's live concert at Bucharest, you know, and it was obviously he was singing everything in English, and maybe the whole audience didn't understand, and and you know, it didn't really matter. But people were open and willing to listen to to music in English, even though they didn't speak it. And, you know, you didn't feel the same thing from Latin music, but I would say, you know, gracias al reggaeton, hay que hablar claro. <laughs> like, the music started traveling, and I think something really powerful to say is how, like, you know, rhythm itself, how people dance, that goes a long way. And, and we started seeing that in Miami, you know, when we started our, our musical career, we had obviously grown up in Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico being, you know, the center of, of reggaeton, especially this very you know, early reggaeton, which was super, you know, a mixture of, of Jamaican dance hall and Panamanian influence and the whole thing. And then obviously the whole New York hip hop vibe, all that coming together to make a very urban sound. And Gigi and I, when we started experimenting with this, you know, we wanted to add a bigger pop element to this. And we wanted to bring some other rhythms that were also urban, that were also Caribbean, that we felt like were maybe just, they could blend in easily into what was back then a very strict reggaeton format. But you know, things started spreading, started spreading. Eventually, we came to Miami, and I remember getting invited to a Serbian party. It was 100% <laughs> Serbians and us, and it was, like, super random party. Like, Gigi's brother knew these guys, and they invited us to the party, and, 
and they knew we were Latin artists, so they wanted us to come to the party. And we thought we were just going to go to a Serbian party. And they didn't play a single song in Serbian. Everything they played was reggaeton in Spanish. And the women, I noticed, were dancing exactly how Latinas dance. And, I mean, that's like an unstoppable yeah. force. When women want to dance something, it's going to pop, period. And I would ask them, <laughs> it's funny, because I would ask them, like, do you guys understand about Spanish? She's like, no, I, I, we don't have no idea, but it's just the rhythm is so good. And, it, it, and I think that goes back to, I think that is the origin of everything, that why Latin music is so popular right now. And it's at the end of the day, everybody loves to dance, to have a good time, to just forget about their problems. And, you know, music is an escape. And I think the rhythm is what really drives the force of what's going on with music right now. And it's it's very rhythmic based, man. It's like they play reggaeton and even the person who is sitting down and is tired is just, just get up and dance. It's like, it's this, it's just the rhythm is so good. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a cliche, but it's a but it's real, isn't it? Um it is and real. I think I would say I think Sumba had a lot to do with it, uh taking that music everywhere, but I, ballads have a tougher time right now, which is too bad because I'm very ballady um, as well. But um, the rhythm travels. The rhythm travels. It's yeah, it does. Of course. Leila, what do you think was that impactful? That I, I read some of your book, um, La Formula Despacito, but and I'm and I'm sure you have many, many more stories of this. But what 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 songs do you feel were like really the ones that drove that the flag for the Latin urban music. Well, it's funny what, what we all started saying. Most of the songs in the book are danceable songs. And uh, it's not like I thought like that was what I was looking for. I simply picked what I thought were the most emblematic songs. And you start with something like Conga, which is, it's not urban, but it's very danceable. Yeah. And, uh, and then the, the first real, um, reggaeton song in the book is uh is gasolina gasolina mm -hmm. very very groundbreaking and and that it opened it wasn't the first but it was i think the the first that was super really global and it and one of the reasons it's there too it's because it paved the way for so many artists and so many artists i i don't know i bet all of you um, yes. right, Yankee and, and Gasolina as, as a really as a big force because it showed the possibilities of the music. I think for, I totally agree with you. I mean, for example, Echo uh, being one of the producers of that song, um, believe it or not, he was the guy who convinced me and Gigi to stop playing just as a band and actually become like an actual urban duo. And he said we would do better because he could see the transition of how music was going more urban instead of more just like live band based or whatever. And we were just like two kids that made dance hall, but we played with a live band. So we were just kind of like, well, you know, what do we do? Because we're we could record as a band or we re record as an urban project. And Echo was one of the ones who told us like, yo, this is going to get so much bigger than where we are right now. And you guys have this like pop element to this. So he told me basically stop playing drums and start singing, start rapping. <laughs> and then and then we started doing these DJ sets and we started going to Colombia to do this stuff. And then all of a sudden when we went to Colombia, actually, that really changed our perspective on reggaeton because we had been just in Puerto Rico where the reggaeton was really, really urban, really about the street. Um, and then we went to Colombia and we somehow ended up opening like Jay Baldwin's shows at the beginning. We met some really cool people that had us opening his shows and we realized, wow, like there is a whole pop side of this that so we were looking for it. We were exploring it in our own music. I don't think we had found it in, in Puerto Rico at the time. We had to basically leave and go to Colombia. And then, you know, that's when all these really exciting things happened for our career and getting signed with Capital and Universal. All that kind of came from having done that leap to say, well, you know what, we have to find a space that, that's going to be open to doing, obviously, like rhythmically, the beats we were doing, which was reggaeton, dancehall, but like, you know, when it came to songwriting, we were trying to make, you know, pop music go with us. Myas, what do you, what do you think about how the transition in the beats and from a producer standpoint, mm -hmm. how that has evolved? I mean, it's really been amazing. I wanted to point out one of the shows that David was just talking about. I actually got to to rock with Domino Saints in a, a huge festival that um, 
you know, it was literally what we're exactly what we're talking about and, and how the whole wave of this uh, Latin explosion, it started to become globalized, right? And it's, it's really amazing when you see countries like um, in the Middle East that are listening and, 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 and being so involved with the with what's going on with Latin music and in Europe, like when I went to London, Ibiza, I didn't expect uh, to see so many DJs and clubs and events and, and incorporating uh, you know this this massive wave of of Latin music that uh, just basically got so popular out of nowhere. Basically, you know, we <laughs> I, I remember it, there was a time where like we started just hearing and seeing urban Latin music everywhere you went, no matter what, no matter where you were. And, and that's a beautiful thing, you know, because I feel like music is always evolving, you know, and, and there's, there's eras of music and there's timelines. And, and I think we're, we're the hottest thing in the world right now. So we got to embrace that and we got to keep pushing. You yeah. Know, from, I, a, from a, from a business perspective, Rick, we had last year, I, we inter I did an interview, but uh, we interviewed the, the head of marketing for all of Universal Global, and he was saying that the countries, that Latin music is huge all over the world. It's consumed in a huge way all over the world. The countries that have the hardest time, the markets that have the hardest time kind of acknowledging that are the English-speaking markets, ironically. Oh, so wow. yeah, the UK and the United States so I feel like the U.S. has finally woken to what we knew, you know, to yeah. been preaching <laughs> really literally for the last 10 years where we were like, guys, can you can you hear it? Like, do you see what's <laughs> happening everywhere? And then finally, it's like, oh, OK, we're we're getting it. But it, it took a it took a beat. I mean, it's, it's a lot. here and everybody thinks that this is el ombligo del mundo and that yeah. nothing else <laughs> happens outside of here. And it's happening, no? And and now oh. that the global streaming, it, it accumulates on a global scale. Now we have our global charts and you really see it there. Like it's, yeah. it's you can't pretend it's not there. Yeah. I think it also has a lot to do because I've, I've given, me and David give a lot of thought about it. Like, what was the, what was the element that really made Latin music global? And I think in, in, in my opinion, that it was the element of the song was included into an urban beat. And it, it would start talking about lyrics that connected with the everyday sort of person, not just the street. The street, you know, and it's like we're start now we're talking about romance, we're talking about love, we're talking about all these different things that could be connect with the the regular individual that they're just trying to connect with a girl or connect, you know, and it's yeah. Before maybe it was too localized, you know, maybe it was Puerto Rico, maybe it was a little bit like, you know, it still has very, right now urban music, it still has a lot of like the slang from Puerto Rico and stuff like that. And, and we're super excited that, I mean, it's so funny when I go to, and I talk to people from all over the world and they're talking about Puerto Rican slang. I think it's, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Uh, but, you know, I think that the, the moment that we included the, the form of a song inside, like Despacito is a perfect example. Yeah, it's like, super well it's a well-written it's a song form and, and it, it, it's included in an urban sort of beat. And that's what I feel like it, it kind of needed to like to go go places like globally because it's, you know, you have that catchy chorus and that, and that song form that it's, it's pretty cool. And I, and I, and also it, that's the way it turned pop that and, and pop, I mean it in the popular, you know, and general popular, you know, and, and, and and I think that's pretty pretty cool that the fact that they included that those kind of song forms into the urban genre. I I'd love to mention the fact like well for example, I feel like Latin culture is definitely a very strong melt, melting pot and you know people always talk about the United States and how it's supposed to be a melting pot and when you look at what a melting pot really is I feel like Latin culture is one that really represents that fully and you feel it in the music. And when you feel it in the music, you also feel the African heritage and the African roots in the music, and that goes to the whole Caribbean. And now with globalization of streaming, which I think helped reggaeton a lot too, you know, Africa finally has, you know, the exposure of their music the way that they deserve. And you have artists like Wizkid and artists like Burna Boy and all these African Nigerian artists that basically the music they make 
is what we've been playing in the Caribbean like forever. But obviously, you know, they're 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 the source mm -hmm. of where all that comes from. And I feel like that's also feeding like for example, when DJ Blast a couple years ago, he started playing all these Afro beats for us. And he was like, David, you gotta listen to these beats. These kids are from Nigeria and they're using my reggaeton samples to make beats, mm -hmm. but they're awesome. And we started listening and I was like, wow, this is this isn't dancehall, this isn't reggaeton, but it, it kind of is, you know, it's, it's Afrobeat or whatever. And then all of a sudden we noticed all the producers on our end, including Maez, you can talk about this too. Everyone started grabbing some of those flavors too. And then, you know, in a sense, I feel like African, like the, the essence of the music started changing as well. So I feel like also as producers, we started looking for different vibes. We started looking for, for, for music that would talk about something other than just the, the, the original Reggaeton de la Mata, the street stuff. Now we talk about everything. Now we can make a reggaeton song that you're going to sing to your kid, not and a song that you're going to sing to your girl. You know, it's a different, it's a it's a whole open possibility. So, you know, para los que dicen que el reggaeton está muerto, I feel like it's the opposite. It's in its best moment. It's in its, its maximum expression. We have everything you can imagine. And, and we really are trying to expose that that idea of, of the melting pot of including everybody and and that's why you see dance hall artists and 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 reggaeton artists and African Afrobeat artists. We're all starting to collaborate together, and that's really the movement. That's really what it is. How do you guys feel about the the search right now of remixes of taking a lot of um, stuff like like Janky did, you know, from from the '90s, and and how that's now also becoming another part of Latin urban music and kind of otra salsa de nuevo into what we're currently doing. Leila, what, what are you seeing that artists are, are trending towards in, in the Latin urban market? Well, there, there's a lot of, um, not only of remixes, but of, um, of, uh, uh, of sampling going on. Uh, <laughs> If you can figure out those splits and you can figure out the <laughs> fights, then good luck to you. I'm sure Maez has, has some thoughts about that. I know that those those samples are can be very expensive. So, and I know that some people tend to do the remix or the sample without asking for permission first, which is a really dangerous path to go to because then they have to pull the track. Um, so I, you know, I think it's interesting. We, we wrote a big story about it, actually. There's a lot going on and it's, and there's some cool things going on. And, and uh, I do like that Latin music does tip its hat a lot to, to old school and to what went on before. And it's kind of cool that how they incorporate it. But yeah, as long as you have all your ducks lined up, I, I mean, it's fun to listen to. Mahesh, what, what do you think will be a cool remix and who would you do it with um so i was mentioning about the going with the the classics bringing back classics i think that's something that as long as you don't step over nobody's feet and you do something that uh makes an impact i, I feel like it should always be welcome you know um you know what we saw with uh snow and, and daddy yankee and collaborations that can bring back the legends and and give them that respect or show them that love to you know to people who had a you know massive massive impact with a certain record and bringing it back i think that's something that's always going to happen that's something that people are always going to appreciate because you're not just creating something from uh an exist an existing classic but you're also collaborating with other generations of artists. And I think that's that's amazing. That's beautiful and, and it should always continue to happen. You know, I think that if you're gonna do a, a remix, I think the art, the original artist should always be included if it's still alive, yeah. of course. Yeah. I, I agree. agree. I agree with you. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Snow, like, this, like you said it, Daddy Yankee and Snow. Like we've seen other yeah. people do Shaggy remixes and all this other stuff, but it's like, yo, why isn't Shaggy on that, man? Yeah. You know, like if you're right, gonna use right. it, I love I love the fact that Yankee not only did he do Informer in Spanish, but he kind of surprised all of us by all of a sudden you see snow in the video. I was like, oh my god, you know, because actually I was like in what's first grade or something when that snow uh informer record, 12 Days of Snow thing came out, and that was a big record. 
And one thing about Latin music that we've noticed is it's not just the, the sampling and the remixes, but because a lot of in, in the urban world and in rap and hip hop, a lot of people, you know, pay homage to the elder, the elder statesman, so to speak. But in Latin music, especially beyond the sampling, they collaborate. So Daddy Yankee collaborates with a lot of the young yeah. kids doing reggaeton now. Uh, and we we see now has a top 10 on Spotify, a number one song on Spotify, actually, with, with a brand new artist. So that's a really interesting thing, I think, about Latin music that you don't see elsewhere. The, the older artist, not to say that we've seen as old or anything, but, you know, he's certainly um, older in terms of reggaeton. They have no problem collaborating with the young artist and vice versa. That, I think, is so cool because it ensures that the music has a long life yeah. and it also shows that there is toda esta como no sé I, I hate to use the word brotherhood but there is a little bit of a brotherhood yeah. or sisterhood if you prefer Gigi. You know. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, I think it is amazing other genres yeah. I think that's great that you brought that up because I've heard a lot of people, especially growing up in Puerto Rico, and me being a kid that studied like percussion, I had to learn timbal and conga and stuff like that. And a lot of people ask, how come like the old salsa kind of didn't survive the same way? And a lot of people used to say, well, you don't see the older orchestras hiring younger musicians. So they're not like passing down. And that's when you think about it, like the Gran Combo is still everybody there has been there forever, you know, it's still a very older group. So they're not keeping younger people included. So that's a great, that's a great analogy that you brought up. The fact that like, you know, all these, like you said, more older or more established rappers come and collaborate with younger kids. They're keeping the whole genre alive by doing that. You um, keep it alive. You really do. Yeah. And I think it's really beautiful also what's happening is that I remember like even 10 years ago that if you were from a genre, you stick to your genre, you don't move from a genre, and you don't collaborate with people from other genres. And I always thought that was wild. I'm like, why? Why are these all these walls between these genres? And the fact that urban music has opened up that, you know, has torn down that wall. And now Un Ballenatero is doing a collaboration with urban artists or you see you know now all this like corridos mexicanos and all these things are <laughs> going cool. on and it's like that's amazing because it's like literally there's that you can do anything you know and for us for mm -hmm. artists it's very exciting because before it was very frustrating where you're like no tu haces reggaeton, you can only do reggaeton and you no te pongas inventar you know how they say it's like you know you can't do anything else and it's like, but why? I mean, I think it's beautiful. The fact I've always wanted to do a collaboration with a Gran Combo. And back then it was like, no, that's never going to happen, you know? But now it's, it actually can happen, you know? Now you can do these collaborations with people that you thought they were your legends or, you know, people from other genres. And, and, and it's still awesome because even though everybody brings their own flavor, everybody brings their own style. And I think that is only seen in the Latin market, I think, because, uh, for sure, that's where you see it right now. And, and I think that's very cool. Great. Guys, I really wanna thank you all for taking the time and uh, being a part of this uh, conversation today. And let's just keep an eye out to see what else comes out of this. Cause obviously, you know, music evolves. People used to say rock and roll was something crazy when the new kids brought it out, right? And That's then true. with rock and roll evolved, and the same thing with salsa. It was like, what is that? And then that evolved, and then that, now we're we're actually living and seeing with our own two eyes this evolution of Latin urban music. And let's see what happens in the next twenty years. What else happens there? Thank you, everyone, for for being a part of this. I really appreciate your time, and um, let's stay in touch. Thank you, yeah, thank, thank you, guys. guys. Thank you for your time. <laughs>